Hello everybody and welcome back. In this video solution, we'll dive into the problem word search. So you're given this m cross n grid of characters, which they're going to call board. You're also given the string word. And uh, so their input format is something like this. And we have to return true if the word exists in the grid. Basically, if the word A, B, C, C, E, D exists inside of this matrix, inside of this 2D matrix, then we have to return true. And so in this case, we do indeed find this A, B, C, C, E, D. One quick note is how actually they're constructing the word. So they are saying that you can construct the word from letters of sequentially adjacent cells. So they could be top, bottom, left, right. So for example, if you have the, say the first character A, let's say that you somehow find the first character A. You can look for the top, bottom, right and left positions and try to find the next character B. And so in this case, we find that the rightmost character is character B, which matches. And so now we have the string AB already with us. And so from the point B, we can again start looking for the next character, which is C. From C, we can again look for C, then E, and then D. And we can do this for however big the board is, however long the word is. And we can do this sort of approach without any edge cases, without any sneaky observations, because what they have given to us, like these condition over here, is exactly what we're going to implement. Okay, without talking too much, let's get started the code. First thing I'd like to do is set up a bunch of basic variables. So we have M and an L, which is going to be the length of board, which is the number of rows, length of board of uh, zero, which is Okay, let me just remove this length of board of zero, which is the number of columns and the length of word, which is the length of the string. Okay. Now the goal here was to find this character A, right? We somehow found this character A and we knew that, okay, we can do the search from this, but how do we find this character A? Initially, we won't know where it is. So we'll have to iterate over all of the values. So we'll do X in range of M where X represents each row index and y in range of n, where y represents the column index. And we'll say if the board of x, y is equals to equals to word of zero, if we have found this particular x, y coordinate matching this first character of the word, then we can start our search from this. And whatever is the answer from that search, we can return that. But uh, not so fast. So the thing is, what will happen is when we're iterating over all of these X and Y's, let's take the case of A. And if you find this A first, then that's fine. You can find the entire answer. But let's say in the bad case, you found this A first. So this A will, will start from this A and we'll look for the top, bottom, left, right, and we'll try to find the character B. In this case, we find that B is nowhere to be found. And so we can't return false right away because there is another A present inside of this grid. So we'll say, you know what? Return search only if, only if this is true, then return true. If not, well, let's hope that we can find this out in a later iteration. And if we can find no such starting places of A, well, we'll just return false. Okay, the search thing, I've still left a blank. So let's try to fill in. For the search, what all do we need to know? Well, search for, first of all, we need to know where we are inside of this grid. So we want to pass in the X, Y coordinates, but we also want to pass one more thing. We also want to know where we are inside of the word itself. Because if you look at it, if, even if I specify say current X, Y coordinate, let's say that I am at this particular coordinate, which character do I look for? Like, how do I know which character should I look for? And so for this, I'll have to return an I index, which specifies that this is the current index inside of this word over here that tells me, okay, this is the index I'm looking for. Okay. Let's start coding up the search function. So as we discussed, we have the inputs X, Y, and I. Now what is the base case for this function? The base case is the, is when we have exhausted all of the characters of the word. So first we started from the index zero, 
then we went to into one, then two, then three, and then on and on and on until we reached the very end. Now, what is the very end? That is when i equals to equals to l. That is when we are at the end of this string. We have exhausted all of the characters in the string and we have found all of the characters. At this point, you can return true. Easy as that. Now, we also said that uh, when you're doing this i, this is fine, but you also want to search for all of the neighbors. All right, when you're at this character a, you want to look for all of its neighbors, top, bottom, left, and right. So let's try it and do that. So we'll do x plus one y and then i plus one. And uh, it's just going to be a copy paste four times. Once we have done that, we can say that we have explored in all of the four directions. Now, what do we do? Well, first of all, we need to do a sanity check over here. Since these x's and y's can go out of bounds, we'll have to specify them to be inside of the bounds. So we'll say if you're not inside of the grid, if you're not following these conditions, where x is inside of this row range and y is inside of this column range. Well, in that case, return false. I don't want it to go outside of the grid. Okay. So we have specified that. And uh, if you notice, we're also doing this i plus one over here. And we can only do that when we have found a character match. So we'll also need to check that over here. Key if board of x, y is uh, equals to word of i, then that's fine. That's cool. And we can do this i plus one thing. But if it is not the case, if you have found a character that does not match, then return false. Okay. Now, the result is just going to be to return this or this or this. Basically, if you find any one of them to be true, we're done. Right? By the way, if you look at this line, you'll quickly realize that we can go in an infinite recursion. And that is because you can start from the current position. Then you will move to the right of it. And then from the right, you can move back to the left again. And so you're back at the starting position. What it means is you can go in an infinite sort of circular loop. To prevent that, we can set the board of uh, x, y to be equals to a blank state. And we'll check beforehand if board of x, y is a blank state, which means that we've already visited, we can return false. And so we are basically done. We can do a quick sanity check over here. Okay, so cool. After running all of the sample test cases, we see that it passes. But before you get too excited and submit, let me show you one test case which will not work. By the way, uh, I'll put this down in the description below as well, so you can test it out for yourself. And you'll find that this code will no longer work for this particular valid test case. You'll see that the output is false even though the expected is true. And so to understand that better, let's take a look at another example. This is more abstract example, but should help us clarify what we're going with. So in this case, I have a five cross five grid over here, and this is the initial status of the grid, okay? And I'm going to tell you the answer right away for this question. We're going to assume that the answer is in this format. So the first character matched over here, and then we moved here, here, and then here. So this is a four letter word, and we are able to find a match like this. So this is the final answer, and we'll keep that in mind. But let's start from the scratch. Let's start from the zeroth case, and we'll start iterating for all of the values. So let's say we iterate, 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 and we found a match. We found the first character matching. So that's great, right? Now we'll go ahead and search in all the four directions. So we'll go ahead and mark all of these values. At this point, we realize that all of these are oranges, which means that none of these characters matched. Like the first character matched, which is why we saw the yellow over here, but the second character did not match with any of them. And so we'll have to terminate here right away because we can't go any further. But let's say that we keep on iterating. And so we'll keep on iterating, we'll keep on iterating, and we find another first character match. At this point, we've realized that we can again start a DFS from this point. As we already saw, this is a perfectly valid case to happen. But let's say that we start a DFS from this point. And hey, great. It looks like we found a second character match. So that's great, right? But uh, if you recall the answer we had, 
it was this yellow character over here, then this green, then this green, and then this green. So the original answer had this sort of zigzag pattern over here. But in this case, do you realize what's happening? In this case, we have already marked this guy to be visited. And so as soon as we come to the second character, once we are trying to look for the third character, even if the third character matched over here, we would call it visited and we can't go any further. In this way, the sort of previous iteration sort of uh, polluted our grid. And so we need to be able to clean this up. What we want to do essentially is say that, uh, you know what, whatever this mess is, I want to be able to clean all of this up and reset it to whatever it was before. So that whenever this next guy comes up, I can easily go on and find the answer. And so we can finally jump back to the code and uh, start making a very small change. What we're going to do is we're going to save whatever the answer was inside of this temp over here and we'll return this temp. Nothing too different, but what we had this board of XY, which we polluted, we are going to fix it again. So instead of setting it to blank character, we're going to set it to word of I. And what it means is we are going to reset it to the character it was before. We'll try submitting this again, try running this again, and this works. With this, we can finally go on add submit and we'll see the runtime and the memory. Cool. So this works out and this looks like even with the five seconds, we are better than 85% of Python three people. So pretty good, pretty cool question. It's mostly implementation based, but this sort of edge case of like truly understand what backtracking means is what makes this problem a good one. Anyways, this is it for this problem word search. If you like this video and want to see more like, and subscribe, it helps out the channel.